Hello, Chart Watchers, and welcome to this Monday, June 3rd, 2019 Market Watchers Live Show with your host, Tom Boley and Aaron Swinlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to the show. And for our regulars, welcome back. Well, the market's getting off to a little bit better start this week, but a lot of damage has been done. Currently, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up six points, the S&P 500 down two, the NASDAQ minus 55, clearly underperforming here. The Russell 2000, however, is actually up three points. 10-year Treasury yield continues to drift lower, down another two basis points, 2.12%. Volatility index, even though it is down today, uh, you can see the uptrend continues for about the last seven, eight trading sessions. Not a good sign. You always got to be a little bit careful with the market when the volatility index is on the rise. Materials having a strong day today, along with energy. These were the two best performing sectors when I looked last. And part of the reason is we're seeing the dollar uh, come down. We had a rough day on the dollar index on Friday, dollar drifting lower again today. And that is certainly enabling uh, materials and energy stocks to outperform. Uh, the communication services group really getting hit to the downside. Uh, part of that reason, as you can see over here, internet stocks getting hit. Google having a particularly rough day down 63 and a half points today. Very, very poor day for the internet space. Uh, but check out the biotechs. Biotechs have uh, been under pressure for quite a while, last few months, and really underperformers throughout 2019. But we are going to head into a strong seasonal period for biotechs. And we are up today having a nice day up about one and a half percent. Talk a little bit about uh, more about the biotechs in just a minute. Broadline retail, which uh, had also been a very strong group in 2018 and 2019, as you can see through early May. But the last 30 days or so, uh, the group taking a pretty big hit down about 10 percent just in the last month. Software, which has been one of the darlings of the market, actually breaking down to about a six, seven week low uh, today. And some of the key software stocks that have been leading the market to the upside uh, falling in uh, sympathy there. And then uh, finally, Amgen. This is a stock that's helping to lead the biotechs higher. You can see the stock actually moving earlier today to about a one month high. Uh, this is a stock that loves the summertime. We'll uh, look at some of that seasonality information in just a couple minutes. But first, let me bring in my co-host, Aaron. Aaron, how was your weekend? I had a very nice weekend, a little exhausting, but I got my youngest daughter back in my house. Uh, to go back to school. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah, that's always a good thing. Any, anything to do with your kids is always a good thing. Good way to spend your time, no doubt. Yeah, I actually miss miss her. So I, I'm glad to have her uh, local, <laughs> very local. Yeah, that's uh, it's always good to be around your kids and be able to see them from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a special guest with us today. Uh, Greg Schnell is joining us. And I know, Greg, you got to be uh, pretty excited uh, you got a Canadian team playing in the NBA Finals. And uh, I have to say that that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> anyway, good morning to everybody or good afternoon uh, if you're on the East Coast. But uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to be part of, the, part of the basketball mania at this time of year. So it's great. Yeah, I think they had a chance to really uh, throw a monkey wrench into things. I mean, you got the Golden State Warriors, which uh, some are claiming are maybe the best dynasty of all time. And I think a lot of folks thought, well, you know, Toronto's new to the NBA Finals. You know, Golden State's just going to waltz right through. But didn't happen in the first game. And yet last night's game was pretty close, too. But Golden State did pull it out at the end. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, well, what have you been thinking about this market? I mean, I, we're going to have you back in here. Actually, just to let everybody know, Greg is going to stick around with us throughout the show today. And he's going to participate in our Monday setups in, uh, later and also has some thoughts about gold. So when Aaron goes through her sentiment, talks about gold, I know uh, Greg's got some interesting information that he would like to share there. But uh, what have you been thinking about the market here of late? You know, I, I've been watching the the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average and the uh, for people who followed my work, uh, the breadth indicators for the uh, for the market, just the percentage of stocks on a buy signal and that kind of stuff have been very weak. So both on the NASDAQ and on the New York are below 50%. So it's very hard to have a bull market when everything is uh, uh, so weak. And I, I continue to be a little bit worried about the global picture. Uh, both Japan and Germany are failing to hold um, above an important support level. So I think there's a lot of global pressure. I don't expect the US markets to be the weakest by far. I think the problems are overseas, but I'm not sure that the US market is gonna be able to avoid the global weakness. Yeah, it might uh, maybe import a recession. Is that what you're 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, the PMI numbers around the world are down. I, I saw Japan had dipped into negative territory. Um, lots of lots of trouble out there in terms of uh, global activity levels. So that's one of the problems I'm expecting that is going to weigh on this market here through the summer. All right. Well, Greg is going to be with us all uh, throughout the show today. So uh, stick around because you'll be hearing quite a bit from Greg. Um, and so let's go ahead, Aaron, and get into the upcoming schedule and today's agenda. All right. Well, the upcoming schedule is really quite exciting. Uh, Wednesday, we have Rick Ben Sr. Jesse Felder of the Felder Report will be in with us Thursday. Following Tuesday, Tom, you've got a workshop. And oh my goodness, Wednesday is Tim Ord, but Thursday we have John Murphy back on the show. So you'll definitely want to mark your calendars for June 13th. Today, we have a packed agenda and a packed house, as Tom was saying. Monday, We'll start with Monday setups after technical news and headlines. Earnings Spotlight, John Hopkins is here to talk about that. 10 and 10, our first symbol is going to be Maxim Integrated Products, MXIM. And then I will finish the program with sentiment with a little help from Greg at the end. Let's go ahead and get started with technical news and headlines. All right. Sounds good. Well, let's jump into the economic reports today. You can see a couple of manufacturing reports that came out this morning. The uh, May PMI manufacturing index came in just slightly below expectations. And then the ISM manufacturing index came in a little bit more below expectations. So both a little weak. Uh, April construction spending came in flat. Market was expecting a rise of four uh, tenths of one percent. I will say that almost all of these home uh, construction reports, home building reports, uh, do have a little bit of lag. So you have to play that, you know, keep that in mind. We saw uh, quite a drop in uh, interest rates in May. So I'm sure that that will have an impact on some of these numbers as we go forward. But still, nonetheless, the April number did come in below expectations. As far as the 10-year Treasury yield goes, I think it just continues to be a flight to quality. A lot of folks jumping into the Treasuries. And as a result, the yields just keep dropping. Uh, this is not a good sign. However, I do think that there is potentially, at least in the near term, an end in sight. And I'm going to go back three years just to show you that we are now down. We hit a low today just below 2.10%. And you can see going back the last uh, two, maybe two and a quarter, two and a half years, the low was down at about 2.04%. And we are almost there. So that's an area where I would expect that technicians would look at the chart and say, well, this might be a good time to exit the treasuries because we are getting close to a yield support. And if that happens, then I think maybe we'll at least get a temporary uh, bounce. And if folks do move out of treasuries, then I think we could see a little bit of a rebound in equities. But there's a lot of damage that's taken place on the uh, equity charts. And we're going to take a look at that here in just one minute. Uh, there were no earnings reports out of significance today before the bell. So I am going to go straight into, uh, let's take a look at the S&P 500 on this daily chart. And you can see that on a daily basis, we dipped below the 20 day moving average. The 20 has gone below the 50. And notice the last rally attempt back in uh, middle part of May, we failed at that 20 day moving average and rolled over. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily indicative of a lot of weakness to come, but certainly in the short term, Technical conditions have turned much more bearish. And anytime you've got the, the equity markets below their key moving averages and the volatility index rising, which is what we have now, I think you have to be careful because if you're trying to catch a bottom and you're off by a day or worse yet, if you're off by a week, uh, you could see a tremendous amount of damage in your portfolio. So I think it's time to be cautious. But at the same time, uh, at least from my perspective, I believe we're in a secular bull market. And I think this will present some opportunities as we move down the road. A couple of areas to keep an eye on. One is software. The uh, Dow Jones U.S. Software Index, this has been a leader. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this chart out. And we can go out about five years. I'll make it a weekly chart. And I also want to show you how this group is stacking up relative to the S&P 500 so that you can kind of see the significance of what's taking place here. Uh, today with, uh, well, this past week, really, with what I think is a breakdown on the daily chart. So here is, down at the bottom is your software relative to the S&P 500. So no doubt this has been one of the strongest areas when the market struggles, money rotates in. And uh, even in May, 
when we saw a lot of movement to the downside over the past five weeks. You can see software still hanging in pretty well, but now on a daily basis, we're starting to roll over. Now, when you look at this weekly chart, the software group has pulled back to 24.94. The 20 week EMA is at 24.93. So I could still argue when you go back and you look, we've had plenty of drops where we've tested that 20 week moving average. But when we break below it, we need to at least pay a little bit more attention. And I think that's where we are here right now. So again, we go back and we look at the daily chart, the weekly sitting on a key support level, the daily is below uh, support. It, it lost the May low. Uh, the 20 day moving average is about to cross back below the 50. So we're about to see a death cross. The PPO on a daily basis has turned negative. I'm not writing off software, but I think you have to recognize that for the first time in 2019, this is a group that is starting to show some wear and tear on a daily chart. That is not a good sign because again, this has been one of the leading areas within the market. So something to, uh, to watch here. Also, I wanted to mention the uh, there were two stocks I think they're going to be reporting um, after the bell, just smaller software companies. But I wanted to point them out. I'm going to bring them up on this relative chart because this is a, these are a couple of stocks that have not been performing well relative to the group. So the group is now starting to roll over. And you can see here BOX, which is Box Inc., is breaking to a multi-month low ahead of their earnings report. And they have not been a very good relative performer. I do not expect a great report out of this stock and any kind of a bounce after earnings probably, uh, well, I'm not going to short, but it might set up for a short because it is such a uh, weak relative performer. The other one that's uh, in this space that's been weak of late is COUPA. Not sure why that's not, or maybe it's, oh, it's COUP, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and pull this one up, COUP, and go with the relative chart. And here you can see the, the move back down uh, below the 20-day moving average. Now, actually, this one on a relative basis is much stronger. Of these two, if there's one that I would maybe pick over the other, it would certainly be this one because of the recent relative breakout versus the software group. So I do think this is one uh, that could uh, maybe work out pretty well. I think it's got great support here at the triple top where it broke out, tested, and then bounced again. So maybe it's got another 4 or $5 to the downside. But this also, because it is one of the leaders, we could see a big breakout with this stock. We'll want to watch and see how this one uh, does into uh, the close today and then uh, also tomorrow. Um, biotechs. I'm going to first bring up a seasonality chart here. And let's take a look at the biotechs. And you, first of all, you can see over the last five years, in July, we have been up every year and averaged going up almost 6%. And as you pull this back, it's been up the last seven years, eight years. So last eight years, it's been up every year and averaging 6.5%. That's a pretty good annual return. And this is just one month's return. But even if we go all the way back 20 years, you can see July has been higher 74% of the time for biotechs. And they've averaged going up 4.4%. Now, that's a, the average for the entire index. If I then go to Amgen, which is having a really strong day today, and you can see over the last five years, Amgen's been up every year, averaging 9% per year. And look over the last 20 years, Amgen's been up in July, 84% of those Julys, averaging going up 8.7%. That is a nice annual return in just one month. So I think Amgen is a stock that we want to kind of keep an eye on. If you look at the chart here, as it was tried, didn't quite put in a new low, but the PPO is, has definitely improved. We're trying to get back above that 20-day moving average for the first time in about seven weeks. I could see it easily a test of about, well, we almost got there earlier, but I think this 178, 180 area, which is where the last rally failed, up close to the 50-day moving average, I think that would be the first key area of resistance. But if we could break through, just keep this uh, seasonal strength in mind. Um, I know also the autos and the auto parts stocks were uh, bouncing today, but I'm going to pull up the auto parts first. And I'm just going to show you the, the you know move higher here. It is up 1.8%, but this is a group that has been just lambasted. And when we pull up the relative chart, and um, let's try this. And I'm going to go back. Now let's go back a couple years here. 
So on a relative basis, you can see that this group, the auto parts, was in a relative bear flag. Had a flagpole, sideways consolidation, bear flag, and then another breakdown. So yes, this, this group's having a nice bounce back today. This is the type of group that I would not be at all interested in chasing. It's proven for quite some time now that it's a laggard. And so outside of maybe a short-term bounce, I think we go lower in the group. All right, uh, Aaron, upgrades, downgrades, what you got for today? All right, let's take a quick peek here. I've got four upgrades I'm going to show you and two downgrades. So let's go ahead and we're going to get started right here with DuPont. Demo <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, uh, DuPont right now is uh, upgraded. Looks like a great chart. Of course, it's up 9% right now. Uh, it was upgraded by Citigroup from a neutral to a buy, and their upside target is at $79. So I'm guessing right just below the overhead resistance that you can see back here from February and March is what they're looking at. This point, I would just be watching that 50-day EMA. It's still got to get above that, and that kind of coincides with that 7250 area where we had that short-term low back in March. Looking at the OBV, though, you can see it has been trending upwards. Meanwhile, the bottoms have been moving mostly sideways, so that's a nice positive divergence. I would want to wait till we got a little bit of a pullback on this one, though. A 9% move to the upside is uh, pretty hefty. HD Supply Holdings was upgraded today by Longbow from a neutral to a buy. They have a price target that they have moved to $53, so they are looking for certainly a breakout above the top here in May. Looks like we had a falling wedge. It has executed today on this upgrade. PMO is trying to turn up, not like in the OBV setup, and you're going to see some better setups on the OBV on some of these later charts. Target Resources, TRGP, was upgraded today by SunTrust from a hold to a buy, and they list a target at $48, coinciding uh, right there with the top back in February. You know, it's really been in a trading range. It was uh, extended just a little bit here, but, uh, you know, it's really been a sideways move. And the PMO, the good news would be, I suppose, is that it is decelerating above the zero line, but I... I'm doubting that it's going to manage to stay above that. But you know you're near the bottom of a trading range. You know you could you could uh, make a play to go up there to about what is that 4250 top of the range on the upgrade. Uh, but you know it's an energy stock and again it's been in a trading range since the beginning of March, so it's not really one of your more exciting stocks out there. Waste management, RBC Capital upgraded it from a sector perform to an outperform. They have changed their target from 113 up to 125. We do have the buy signal. Uh, the PMO has been moving mostly sideways, which makes sense because we've been in a pretty steady uh, acceleration to the upside. But we're getting ready to touch that uh, overhead resistance there at the top of this rising wedge. That is a bearish pattern. So the expectation honestly should be a downside move. But, you know, you're coupling that with still a very strong scooter uh, and that PMO buy signal. I would just be a little bit careful about this one. And I think it's very interesting because at the same time that waste management was upgraded, waste connections in the same industry group was downgraded today by BMO Capital from an outperform to a market perform. So they're moving it down to a neutral position, uh, but you can see quite a difference, I would say, in the setups here versus, let's look over here, see? We have the rising wedge, so we still are in that rising trend that we can see there, but we've had this nice breakout over short term term tops. PMO is looking pretty ugly. Can't say that I like the OBV very much, but we are sitting in the, the hot zone there for the scooter. So it is a stronger stock in that area, but I found it very interesting that, um, you know, one agency upgraded waste management, and then we've had another agency downgrade uh, waste and disposal services. So 
just a little in interesting information there for you. And then finally, our last one is WellCare Health Plans. It was downgraded today by KeyBank Capital from an overweight to a sector weight, so more of a neutral. I actually like this chart, and there's a few reasons. Number one is we have this PMO that is turning up above the signal line. We're in a rising trend channel. Notice that the OBV has been rising very nicely, but I noticed something on here I want to show you in particular. If we make this a solid line chart, notice what happened back here uh, at the end of May. We had that big decline. And what was the OBV doing during that same period of time? We had rising bottoms. We had a rising OBV, rising tops. Uh, so despite that pullback, we still got the rising uh, volume there. And with the uh, turn to the upside, I honestly like this one, uh, I'm, I'm surprised it's downgrade, uh, but it is a downgrade to a, more of a neutral position rather than a sell position. That's all I had for the upgrades and downgrades. Here is the summary slide of what I just showed you. And I will have this up in the Market Watchers Live recap at the end of the day. So you can go ahead and take a look at those on your own if you would like. All right, time to move into Monday setups already. My goodness, can you believe it? I have to say, uh, given what we have here, let's go ahead. I'm going to pull these up. So Avalon Bay was mine. I think we decided that I probably had the the least amount of loss <laughs> this morning. Um, Tom had SMAR. Uh, let's go ahead and take a, a peek at these really quickly. And then Greg had picked, um, with along with the audience, they picked his uh, AT&T pick. So let's go ahead and see. So Avalon Bay, I think, is at 203 so i'm going to get that one up here avb uh 202 so it has dropped even further since the last time let me go ahead and make this my chart style is throwing me off here all right so yeah mostly sideways got a little bit of a decline there so avalon bay uh, not so great we have smar there we go uh, 4059, Tom. I think we were at uh, 43. So, yeah, another. I know it. I know it well. I got stopped out of it earlier. Um, <gasps> yeah, it's, it's uh, the whole software group, as I mentioned earlier, really taking a hit today. And it includes a lot of uh, the, the leaders in the group as well as some of the other underperformers. But yeah, the whole group has been down. So, it's uh, not. Uh, not a not a good one at this point for sure. I'd have to wait and see a reversal before I'd be in. Yep. All right, uh, and then here is AT and T audience and Greg. Yeah, not a, not the best. Um, but I, I, I'm gonna fess up on the list of my choices. I had an AT and T in there, so I was on board with this stock as well. And uh, yeah, didn't turn out too good, huh, Greg? <laughs> No, it definitely didn't. So uh, the other thing is we've got some negative divergence now on the PMO. So probably yeah. suggest just avoid that place for a while here. Yeah. All righty. Let's see. But uh, as Tom says, we're only as good as good as our current picks. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Notice uh, the ones I have picked. Um, I'm not really thrilled with the discretionary sector, but you know what? I ended up with two um, decent choices in there from my various scans I did today. And I actually included Merck. I had that in last week and I still like it. So let's go ahead and we'll look at a few of these really quickly. All righty. So um, Boston Scientific was one that I came up with and I'm going to annotate just very quickly here. So here is your overhead resistance and notice it lines up very well uh, at $39. We failed there, but I have the 20 crossing above the 50 day EMA. It's holding above the 20 day EMA. The PMO has just moved into positive territory. So I like that. And uh, the scooter, it is not in the hot zone, but it's, it's uh, healthy at this point. So I'm looking for a breakout above that $39 range on Boston Scientific. Next one up is Dollar Tree. And this one is, uh, nope, this one isn't in the polls. Duncan, it is. Nice little breakout here. Um, 
you know, I don't like the fact that it is trading right now at the bottom of the range for the day, but you do have uh, that tiny breakout and it is trading above the 20 day EMA. PMO is turning up. Uh, notice that the OBV on the, the rise set another uh, higher top than previously. And the scooter has gotten up into that um, hot zone area. So I think this one has some opportunity here. And I think if we annotate here, there we go. You know, we're breaking out of a declining trend. Uh, and I think it's happening in a pretty solid way. So Dollar Tree, I thought looked interesting for a Monday setup. Duncan Brands, this is the one that I picked uh, for the poll. It has hit over, overhead resistance. Uh, the PMO though has turned up and then look at what's happening with the OBV on this breakout. Uh, and of course this breakout, this is from Friday. Okay, so we got the breakout on Friday and it looks like we could end up uh, with positive volume on a positive close and that would move that OBV up even higher. Uh, you could make a case for a little bit of a double bottom here. So I'm looking for a breakout above like 75.25 and a move up to $77. So I think on a short term basis, this one could be interesting. EQC. There we go, PMO buy signal, it's now hit positive territory. You can see that we've been uh, struggling a little bit with the overhead resistance here, which is why I did uh, opt not to pick it this time around, but you can see the 20 is just crossing above that 50 day EMA. This one might be a uh, one to consider for the intermediate term. Merck is the one that I had on my list last week and I'm continuing to keep it. It wasn't a very good week last week, but I'm looking for a better week. Notice that the PMO is um, turning up sharply with today's 1.35% uh, gain so far. It's above those previous, uh, you know, earlier tops at about 80. So I think that's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, 82 uh, could be a pretty good, uh, pretty good move up to 80. But the one I ended up picking today was Shaw Communications, and it's been in a rising trend. Uh, it is getting ready to hit some overhead resistance here, some short-term overhead resistance. Uh, but you know what? If I look at these tops going across here and I look at the rising bottoms coming up here, that could be considered a, a an ascending triangle. And the expectation would be a breakout. The PMO got into that positive territory. It looks like it wants to accelerate upwards. And look at the nice move on the OBV uh, that really is confirming that uh, rally that we had earlier. Uh, it's pretty healthy scooter as well. So my pick, uh, guys, is SJR. All right. That's one in the books. SJR, current price, uh, was it 2042? Yep. All right. And uh, Greg Schnell. You've uh, agreed to join us for this week. What do you have? What do you like this week? I like uh, gold. I like gold a lot. Um, so for the last month, I've been looking at the setup on uh, gold. And on Friday, we got the breakout that we're looking for. So I'm going to go through some gold stocks and just talk about those briefly. So just for everybody's information here, I have the SCTR, the scooter, um, in black, and then I have the relative strength compared to the S&P 500 in purple, and I've just overlaid those two onto the same indicator panel. And the reason I do that is uh, I want the screen real estate, so I want everything uh, a little bit larger. So they're both trending higher, but this blue line is for the 75% on the scooter ranking, and I like things when they're in the top quartile. So uh, one of the things that we see here on Agnico Eagle is that we've got a series of tops coming in, call it $47, just in this general range. Uh, this, this stock to me looks excellent. Uh, there's, there's lots of reasons I like it here. And one of the things I wanna focus on is this, this move here looks to me like an initiation move. And uh, later on, I'll show a little bit on the broader picture for gold. But if I just jump over and grab this same chart um, a -E -M. and what I want to show here is just on the weekly chart, this, this setup, I really like this. The, uh, PPO has gone above zero. It pulled back and is now turning up just at zero here and starting to head up here. This to me looks like a great setup. The full stochastic on a weekly chart moving above 50, the scooter ranking up above, uh, 75 and heading higher. 
One of the things that's really interesting is see how the scooter for a couple of years here stayed below 75 and recently we got a kick up and then a pullback and now a resurgence. I typically really like that when all of a sudden something that hasn't performed for a long time is starting to stay at the top of the scooter rankings. So a breakout here above this 46, 46, uh, very bullish, uh, for, sorry, 45, 46. And uh, getting above that and heading higher would be uh, number one on my list. So I really like that uh, chart. Now, I'm just going to scroll down here. I've got Franco, Nevada. And uh, same thing here. It's trying to break through prior highs on a daily chart. And if we go to the weekly chart, just... Uh, and what you see here, same sort of thing where it was underperforming on the scooter for a long time and now is starting to take off to the upside and right at resistance. But um, lots of things about this gold setup I really like. Same thing on the scooter. So they're all doing the, the same sort of pattern. Rolling up here to uh, gold now. Uh, Barrick Gold bought Rand Gold and took over their ticker symbol. So in Canada, they're still abx.to, but in the US, they're now gold. So this is not dollar gold which is the price of gold 13 16 an ounce or whatever um this is uh barrett gold so just don't be confused by the the difference in the ticker symbol here but you know after barrick made a big low here took off to the upside lots of resistance in around this 1375 but you can see the the scooter ranking started to perform here and now kicking back up and if we go see that on a weekly chart uh, same idea here where the full stochastic is starting to turn up and um, and as this starts to take off here I this is uh, usually the full stochastic on a weekly is the first thing I want to see and this is just turning back up at zero here so I really like this chart and again the scooter ranking had not been performing for years and then all of a sudden is kicked up pulled back and now I expect it to go on a bit of a run uh, looking at uh, my next one, this is uh, still Silver Standard Resources, and uh, you can see that this chart was breaking out, pulled back, and went into a nice base here in May and is starting to turn upward. Really like the shape of this chart, and on a weekly chart. Uh, lots of the ones I tried to pick today are both listed on Canada and the U.S., um, sorry I'm on a foreign mouse here, so I'm uh, a little a little uncontrolled with my mouse movement here, but $11 was a nice uh, res resistance level. It broke through, came back, pulled down to it, and it looks like it's turning up, and I like the PPO bounce at zero. So that's a really nice one, and I must have missed one, so I'm sorry for the scrolling. There it is. Um, Centera Gold. And what you see here on Centera is a breakout above uh, prior resistance level, and if we go look at it on a weekly chart, uh, this looks to me like it's ready to go. It's breaking through this $8 level, and you can see that was big resistance for a long period of time. I think this chart's ready to rock. So I'll leave it there and pass it back to Tom. All right. Uh, so what was your what was your pick for the week? Which one was your favorite? Uh, Silver Standard Resources, so SSRM. All right, SSRM. And why don't you pull that one up on your chart there and just get the price. Sure. Already get it. There we go. Uh, so we're sitting at 1193 all right, 1193 SSRM sounds good. All right, I am going to go with uh, my pick this week is going to be uh, Viasat, VSAT. Um, I'll get an update just to make sure I got the right price here. So it'll be VSAT at 87.98. Um, I just, this stock came out with great earnings, stock gapped up. It's been one of the best performers in the telecom equipment space. It's pulled back for four or five days. Stock was at 97.5 after earnings come all the way back down, filled gap support. Sitting near the 50-day moving average, uh, literally, I'd keep a fairly, I think buying at current price down to about 85 to 86 is fine. A move below 85, especially a close below uh, 85, I would keep a tight stop and be out of it. Um, looking uh, at the relative strength, though, you can see here, VSAT just recently broke out uh, versus the telecom equipment. So it's been a leader in that space. And really up until just recently, in the last month or so when the market's taken a hit, uh, this has been one of the uh, better areas in the market. So I think if we rally, I you know, right now, market certainly is uh, kind of difficult to take a whole lot of new positions in. Uh, I'd like to see a reversal. I'd like to see maybe a top in the VIX, some kind of topping candle. I don't know that we're quite there yet. 
But I do think in this range, 85 to 88, I think that is a key accumulation area on BSAT. A couple of others I'll go through. Let's take a look at eBay. Um, eBay, I like this one not so much because of how it's trading because it is below the 20 day. It's been trending down during the last month, but this is a massive area of support between 35 and 36. We're currently at 3557. So this is one I think you can keep a very tight stop on. eBay is in one of the strongest areas of the market. Um, and as a result, I think that this is one that if the market does rally, we're going to see money rotate into this group. And the fact that eBay is sitting on the support could bode very well for the stock. So I'm, I like that one. A couple of others try to go through here pretty quickly. Jcom, another one that's, uh, well, actually, this one's in the internet space. And internet stock's getting hit a little bit today because of Google. Um, so I would want to see a reversal. I would not just dive into this one at this point. But if we get a reversing candle, a hammer, something like that, Prince, I would be very interested. You can see that Jcom on a relative basis, now one of the top performers in that internet space. Microsoft. And Microsoft's getting hit with the overall software stock. So this one, I would also wait. Uh, let's see if we get a reversing candle, but I do like it if we get the reversal. This has been one of the top software stocks. And Microsoft, you can see relative software has been strong. Software has been strong relative to the S&P, but you can see the huge decline today in uh, software. And that's playing a part here. So I'd wait for a reversal, but I do like Microsoft. OCSL, Oak Tree Specialty. Love this reversing candle here at gap support, price support. This also is in a strong area of the market, and it has been one of the leaders over the past month. Looks like it broke that relative downtrend, starting to turn back to the upside. Love the volume trends. I think this is a good re reward to risk entry. And I think I might have had, well, let's uh, do two more real quick. PayPal, uh, another one I want to watch to see at the close. I do not want to get in on an intraday breakdown. I want to see it reverse. But this has been one of the strongest stocks also in that software space. But uh, you can see this uh, area taking a hit. And the last one I had was TGNA, which uh, also is near this breakout level. Great volume trends. The breakout occurred at about 15. You can see the pullbacks have held at 15. Well, that's about where we are now, 15, 19. So this is another one. It's in the publishing space. I would watch to see if that publishing level holds 355. If we fail there and the stock fails to hold 15, I'd be out. But this has been a leader on some pretty good volume trends, so I like TGNA. So anyhow, this is our summary for our picks for today. Uh, we will try to get through a bunch of them for you. Aaron with SJR, I go with VSAT. Greg's going with SSRM. Lot of different stocks to choose from there. We will see next Monday who comes out on top. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to earnings spotlight. Uh, here, oh, excuse me, uh, this earnings spotlight is brought to you by earningsbeats.com. Earningsbeats.com provides high reward to low risk trading candidates and they'll teach you to focus on the combination of strong fundamentals and strong technicals. Learn to exercise the patience and discipline of an experienced trading service. Earningsbeats.com, better timing, better trades, Mr. Hopkins, I know you're an NBA fan. What do you think of this series going on so far? Well, you know, it's two to one now, right? For Golden State? No, it's one one. It's one one. Right. One. They took one on the road. I'm sorry. Yes. It's soon to be two to one. <laughs> you're not as big a fan as I thought you were. You're not as I, big a fan. I was forecasting into the next uh round. <laughs> Probably. I mean, they're the king Probably. of the hill. You gotta you gotta top them, you know. Uh I think it's awesome that you know toronto's in it uh but you got to pay your dues you know it's really tough i found covering you know sports for so many years very difficult to get into a, a final when it's your first time or or if it's the first time in a long time yeah uh so you know you got to give the little edge you know to golden state i'd say well certainly based on experience i don't think anybody could argue with that i mean that's yeah uh, i'm really going out on a limb right yeah that's time tested <laughs> um yeah, you got the Warriors and the Warriors. <laughs> Speaking of Warriors, yeah, I mean, take a look at the market here. You know, I wasn't able to be in for uh, to listen to the beginning of your show. I'm sure you covered it some. Uh, I've really been uh, paying close attention to the Nasdaq, mm -hmm. and you know, it got as low as seventy three thirty eight just a little while ago. Little bounce now. 
-hmm. If you go back to the 8th of March, it got down to seven, about 73.33. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's pretty important support. So we're going to see if we get some um, buying here. Isn't it amazing, Tom, with the market? Up until May, any little pullback, everybody was in love with stocks and jumping in on the long side. Now they don't want to touch them. You know, so we've got the reverse of what we saw for many months going back to that December low. Uh, but I'm still up to mind, Tom, if you're going to be involved, you know, if you're just if you're worried about the market, you just go move to the sideline. There's nothing else to do. Yeah, I think uh, I think it makes sense, though, that, you know, folks are a little leery to jump into the market right now. I mean, this is the first time in 2019 or at least certainly since the middle of January of 2019 where we've seen the PPO turn negative, and it's been mm -hmm. negative now for the last few weeks. Yep. We've seen failures at the 20-day moving average, which is a sign of weakness. We've seen the 20-day cross below the 50-day. So, I mean, there are definitely some technical signs here, at least on the daily chart, that suggest, you know, folks should be a little bit leery. Absolutely. Uh, you know, also, I think it's worth pointing out on the weekly chart on the NASDAQ, we have gone down below the 20 week moving average of 50 week and now the 20 is rolling over. So even from a longer term perspective, I think there's reason uh, maybe to worry a little bit about the market here. So I'm, I'm still big picture, very bullish, but I don't ignore these breakdowns. I don't uh, you know, I try not to, to jump in front of the market uh, when it's you know rolling like it is to the downside. I think that can be uh, a very painful mistake, but I am looking for something that might suggest we're reversing and I don't see anything just yet. Well, the one thing I would point out is uh, in looking at the VIX, you know, which is up a couple points today, not much really, and quite a bit off the low. Uh, if you go back to that, you know, um, let's say May 9th, you've got a much lower uh, market right now, mm -hmm. yet the VIX is lower. Uh, it was like 24, I think 21, 30 or 40 back in May 9th when the market was higher, and now it's lower and the VIX is sort of, you know, eh, it's a couple points up today, but uh, below where it was when the market was higher. So yeah. you wonder, you start, you got to start to wonder if maybe, you know, the worrying uh, uh, sort of climbing the wall of worry, maybe it's, maybe we're going to start seeing some nibbling pretty soon. Well, we might, but I, you know, I'm not sure. And I think I talked about this last week. I'm not quite sure what to make of the VIX not being as high as it was in early May. Does this mean that we haven't seen enough selling yet because we need to get that, mm -hmm. that uh, VIX up higher, up into the low mid twenties and, you know, maybe even take out that prior hide before the proverbial kitchen sink has been thrown in. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, the other thing is, you know, the, what you were mentioning, well, the market's not as concerned. Uh, so maybe that's a sign that this selling is not going to last. I'm not quite sure. I think you could take, you could argue either side, but what I do want to see and what we saw back in the second week of May is when the VIX was on the rise, you can see this huge reversal in the VIX. And I'm kind of looking for one of those days, and I have not seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So I, I want one of those days where everyone is ready to just to quit and get out of the market, stay out of it for a while, and then all of a sudden, yeah. bottom and, and have a big rally in the afternoon. And so far, that has not happened. Yes. Now, I do want to point out that uh, I did. I had an article this weekend in Chart mm -hmm. Watchers, yep. and you know, our focus always is on companies that beat earnings expectations. And I did point out in there a couple of things. You know, one of the stocks that I pointed out, it's down a little bit today, but let's, you know, let's be real here, is Viva Systems, V-E-E-V. -E -E mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, the stock's down. But if you just take a look at that stock and what is it, look at the volume when it reported the earnings. Yeah. This is the kind of stock, okay, let it, listen, let it pull back. I can't chase it, you know, when it gaps up on massive volume, but I can sure keep an eye on it because this is the type of stock when things settle down, that people are going to want to get involved in. Yeah, and it's in the software group. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, the stock coming down 2.6% actually is, is pretty good considering what we have seen the software group do. Uh, so I, at the beginning of the show, I was talking about the software group and how we've now broken to about a seven-week low. Um, it wasn't that long ago we were at an all-time high at the end of April. And you can see since then, Viva has actually gone higher, even though the uh, software group is down more than 200 points from its earlier high. So mm -hmm. there's no doubt what this is telling you is that this is one of the leaders in the group. So when the market does rebound, I suspect we'll see money rotating back into the leaders. And I agree. I think Viva is one certainly to keep an eye on, maybe keep on a watch list. But while the group is selling off and it's very emotional, 
uh, I would be careful about trying to catch a bottom in any of these software stocks. Yeah, there. and the, which leads me to Microsoft, you know, which again, I, I'm very high in Microsoft. However, I was listening to you before. You do have to see the reversal here, but I just believe that this is the type of stock, you know, their numbers were great. And uh, I always like it when, it's, when a company like Microsoft reports great numbers, they gap up. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, careful and uh, patient to get back involved in the stock. But I do think when the selling's over, um, and like you said, you want to watch for reversal, but I think when the selling's over, this is also the type of stock uh, that the market and traders will be attracted to. Yeah, and I think uh, you could almost go back and look in October when the, the, the overall market got hit. And you can see when you move down the first time or even you know down here, you get down to close to 100, I guess it was on Microsoft. <laughs> Notice these failures at the 20 day. They don't, you know, they bode pretty poorly for the stock. But you see this reversing type candle here where you go down, you take out those prior lows and you finish strong. And look what happens the next five or six days. We get this rally. Check out again in November when we go down, we test, test this prior low, finish with that doji. Look what happens the next six or seven days. So I think that what I'm looking for here is something similar. We know that that initial supports around 122.50. We're breaking down. Would I buy it here? No. But if we reverse later today and come back up to about 123, 123 and a half and print, uh, you know, like a kick save here on this chart, then, yeah, I think this is a stock that could easily reverse, go back up to 130 again. So mm -hmm. I would be watching the close on Microsoft. I would got to be a little bit of a hero, try to be a hero to jump in here. And I don't like trying to be a hero. I agree. Another stock going against green a little bit here, but this is a stock we did put out as an alert recently. And I know that the sector is not necessarily where you want to be, but it's Meritor, M-T-O-R. And the reason I like it, take a look at it. Take a look at the way that stock, you know, reported earnings. Yes, they pulled back. They pulled back to the 200-day, got a nice little bounce here. They tested that 20-day and failed. But relative to the market, I think it's holding up pretty well here. And you get out if it closes below 20. So I think the reward to risk ain't bad. No, it's not bad. Um, you know, I, I might disagree with you a little bit. I do think you got a stock that relative to um, its peers is a pretty good stock. The problem is, look at what its peers are doing relative to the S&P 500. We're almost back down to that October relative low. So you're talking about a group that's near its 52-week relative low. The stock, yes, it's held up a little bit better than its peers, but still, that hasn't kept it from dropping about, I don't know, 25%, something mm -hmm. like that in the past month. That's been a huge drop, but I do agree $20 is a massive uh, support level. We failed at the 20, a, if we come at the 20 day, I should say not 20 price, but if we come back down and can't hold $20 support, you can see that was a prior high. We pulled back, we gapped above it. And since then we have not closed below $20. I think you gotta keep a stop here um, on MTOR. I don't like the fact that it's in such a poor group. I like to try and invest in some of the areas that are stronger relative to the S&P 500. So for me, I'm not interested. But uh, from a bullish perspective, what I'd want to see is a close back up above that 20 day, and especially if the volume were to pick up. The last one I want to get into only because they're um, getting ready to report earnings tomorrow after the bell. This $100 billion market cap company, and uh, the reporting period's coming at a rough time for them, especially since the stock looks like it could be breaking down some. Uh, what do you think of Salesforce.com here, CRM? Do not like it at all. Mm -hmm. Just, I think, uh, and I was talking about this one last week. Look at what the software group has been doing. Continuing to look at it, hit a high here back in the beginning of March. That's when uh, Salesforce hit a high. And then software continued going higher and Salesforce.com could not. So it's in a group that's been continually putting in all-time highs, yet it looks like the stop, stock is going sideways. I said last week, this looks like distribution to me. I think people are selling ahead of this earnings report. Now when the market, when the group is weak and starts to break down, look at what's going on here, down 3%, breaking to multi-month lows. Um, and on a relative basis, Salesforce has just been a laggard, a big laggard relative to the software group over the last three or four months. So I think that what's been holding this stock up for the last three months is being part of a really good group. Mm -hmm. But I think now that the group is starting to sell off, they better come out with a great report. And if they don't, I think this is a stock that could get hit pretty hard. And have you noticed, by the way, recently uh, that companies that even a month ago that were reporting earnings, if they were just okay, were doing all right, 
But now there's no mercy on yeah. these stocks. If they're missing, they're really getting creamed. And one of the things, I'm going to wrap it up here, but one of the things um, in my article I point to is um, we had a webinar recently where we unveiled 30 stocks in three different groups. Uh, one was an aggressive, one was what I call a model portfolio, and one was income and dividend. And I know it's changed, you know, since we last uh, updated it uh, back towards the end of last week. Uh, but everything's down today. But, uh, you know, you if you look at the article, you'll see the nice outperformance. And going back even much further to November, when we unveiled 10 stocks and another 10 in February, the way they performed relative to the market has been unbelievable. And I think the reason that is, Tom, is because we focus on stocks with strong earnings. So no matter the market environment, uh, traders are going to be attracted to those stocks that are really, uh, you know, showing strength in their numbers. Well, I will say this as well about those uh, portfolios, um, the model portfolio, because I have the all the stocks here. The model portfolio is down about half percent today with the NASDAQ down, you know, one point two six percent. Yep. And income, that income portfolio is actually up about a half percent today, clearly outperforming the market. So it just depends on your style. But all of these stocks in these portfolios are stocks that are leaders in their industry. And those are the ones I think, you know, the point here really is that you want to try and stick with the leaders. Exactly. That's my point. Well, great. All right. Well, it is always a pleasure to have you on here. Um, I hope that uh, for Greg's sake, because Greg uh, Schnell is with us today, but I'm hoping that Toronto makes this uh, a pretty good series. And yeah. I'd love to go seven games and finish in Toronto. And I don't have a dog in the hunt, so I'm pulling for Greg here. Greg, you got any comments? We're trying to pull for you. I do. I do. I keep hoping that um, that cut. Mr. Leonard gets it done for us. He is awesome. And uh, there's some great stories on the Raptors players. So hopefully we can get something going here. Uh, between hey, Greg, our, Greg, our... listen, Go, yep. Greg, just the fact, the fact that I'm pulling for you does not necessarily bode well for me for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of famous for, uh, I was, uh, I told Tom the story the other day that I, uh, I'm a Nats fan. I'm watching Nationals fan. Okay. And, uh, yeah. I put the game on the, I had no idea what was going on with the game. It was the fifth inning. It was a no hitter. Uh, the Washington uh, pitcher had a no hitter going. So I said, oh, maybe I'll get in and watch the game here. So I put the game on and the next pitch, there was the hit. So you have to understand that just because I'm saying I'm pulling for the Raptors doesn't necessarily help you. Hey, John, uh, maybe you should go to the hockey game and cheer for, <laughs> yeah, cheer for Boston or something. Like that. so. I got it. All right. So I'll Thanks, see you guys everybody. later. Bye. All right. See you, John. That is pretty funny. All right. Well, it is time now, I guess, to jump into the 10 and 10. Aaron, I'm assuming you are ready with an RRG. Oh, you know it. You guys were having so much fun with earnings. I was having fun with the 10 and 10. Awesome. So here we go. Look at all of these hooking around. I think that's really interesting. Uh, the, you know, when we look at what we've got here, a lot of ETFs today. I thought that was interesting. Technology is still a big one, but healthcare coming out of the woodwork today. So I thought that was also interesting, but let's go ahead and get started with Maxim Integrated Products, MXIM. All right, um, yeah, this one actually to me looks a little bit like it's in a different area, but it looks a lot like that MTOR chart, you know, where we had the gap up, um, failed, came all the way back down, look at it holding on to support, goes up and it's failing at the 20 day. So I think we got uh, some issues here that uh, you know we're going to have to address, and we need to get back and close above that 20-day. I think if you look at maybe a similar move was back in December. See how we went negative with the PPO, came back up. We failed at the 20, pulled back, but before we broke down, we actually turned back up and went through the 20. And so that's what I would be looking for here. I would actually be a seller right now because I don't like this failure moving up through the 20 and not being able to sustain it. But I think that the key area of support is going to be down at that 51 level which is where we were back in March, where we just recently went back down. And I think the key resistance is going to be whether or not we can get through this 20-day EMA. And so far, we're failing. So I think we're trapped right now, technically, on the stock. We'll see which way it breaks. Uh, with the overall market, though, selling, and with the volatility index on the rise, I think you got to be real careful here. And so I'd be tempted to build cash and, and see if I can get through this 20-day moving average rather than hope. All right. Let's see. The most popular in the chat room is Tandem Diabetes. 
It says, great PMO and RSI looks like a breakout after consolidating. What do you think? I like it. I think this is a really strong uh, stock. And this is one of the portfolios that I was just mentioning with John. I can't remember if it was in the, um, actually, I think it was in the aggressive portfolio. Um, but this is one I definitely like. I, I think that number one, we got to get through $70. That's where we failed on the last move up in May. But I do think that this is a stock that continues to trend higher. And we could go back and maybe draw a trend line somewhere back in here, something like that. Not exact, but pretty close. But you can see this is a stock that clearly is put, printing higher highs and higher lows. I think the recent low back in April uh, basically went back and tested. See the, the top here, the top here. After we gapped up, this moved back down. That hammer right there went almost right down to price support and then reversed back to the upside. So I think we're still in the uptrend. Perhaps we could maybe even raise this uh, resistance level just a bit. Let's take it up to 75. I think that's your trading range, but I do believe that the next um, big move on the stock is going to be higher. All right. Let's see. Next one up. Uh, we haven't ever looked at this one. I suspect it's a little low on the volume, but KNSL, which is Kinsale Capital, property and casualty. Yeah, a little light on the volume. It's picked up recently, but still a big volume day that you can see there was only 300,000 shares. But I do think that this is a stock that uh, has, has improved quite a bit. I think there are two areas of price support that I would be watching here. One would be the breakout. Uh, so we move up, we consolidate a little bit, a little bit of a flag. We make the breakout, we go back and test this area. I think we're gonna make another breakout above that level. But to the downside, these are the two support levels I'd watch. I think 79 and a half up to about 82 and a half to the downside, obviously the recent high, but in an uptrending stock, I expect that we're gonna break out above that recent high. I think this stock is going to be up in the 90s uh, before too long, but I wouldn't trade it personally because of the lack of volume. Today, only 34,000 shares have traded. Uh, that just isn't enough for me. So I like the chart. I just don't like the uh, lack of liquidity. All right. Next one up is going to be TSN, and that is Tyson Foods. Yep. This is actually in that income portfolio that I, John and I were just talking about. So I do like the fact that this is getting its first test of the 50-day moving average or almost a first test here. The PPO, this stock was really overbought. Look at the RSI, which was up near 90. It pulled back into the 40s and during an uptrend, generally speaking, a move into the 40s is a good sign. The only other significant or somewhat significant dip we had here, you can see that the RSI went just below 50 and then we turned right back up again. This came back a little bit further, but we were just crazy overbought. I think the stock's going to hold the 74, 75 area and eventually come back up and test this 82 and a half area. And it is in a more defensive area of the market, which I think is a good thing given all the volatility right now. All right. Our only discretionary stock, KB Home, KBH. All right. Uh, well, we're in an area that should benefit from the lower interest rates. And this is a stock that has been doing well. I think part of the problem here is that the stock ran into some divergence issues. So if we just annotate here, you can see as we kept trying to move higher and higher throughout the, these five, six weeks, I mean, we could even drag it back probably further to this high over here. But I, I once I get a high like this, a, a negative divergence, and I get a 50-day test, and I get close to that center line reset, I don't go back that far anymore. But here on this rally, I do think that we've got higher highs, lower PPO. Now we've gone down and hit price support. I'd, I'd keep a pretty close eye on this 25 level. I think that's a good support area on the stock. Uh, if I had to trade one way or the other, I would be a buyer here looking for a move up to that 27 and a half level. All right. Next one up is, uh, you know, we've talked about gold, but let's look at non-ferrous metals, wheat and precious metals, WPM. Yeah, this was on my strong earnings chart list, actually. I don't know if it's still there. I haven't seen it in a while. But yeah, you got to like this move back to the upside. I would just simply say that when you pull up a longer term, let me uh, uh, actually just pull up a relative chart here. I think the problem here is this is your non-ferrous metals moving lower. So when you look at a relative strength, this, this area of the market has been incredibly weak, but Wheaton has been one of the better stocks. So what I always say is if I'm trading a stock that's in a weak group, um, and the other thing that I like to do is you can see here trading below the 20, I want to see that move back through the 20. But if I'm trading a stock 
a solid stock in a weak group, I make no excuses if it breaks down because we know the group overall has got some problems. So I think as far as annotating here, um, I think that that rising 20-day moving average at some point will be tested, and I just don't want to lose it. So I think uh, after getting through, I think the next day we came down here, tested it briefly, jumped, it's continued to move up. I think a buck 50 to the downside to test that 20-day moving average is something we could see, uh, but I would be okay with it as long as it holds. Uh, nice breakout, volume starting to increase a little bit. I just uh, wouldn't want to chase it. Uh, let's see if we get a 20-day test. All right. Let's see next one up uh, in honor of Greg being here and for our Canadian friends. How about the uh, XF? n.to it's the financials index etf well i don't like the uh action recently obviously um let me go ahead and pull this up on a non uh relative chart um and i'm gonna i, I do want to see a little bit more data though let's go out a year Okay, for me, I just think that this uh, March low needs to hold. Um, I don't like the fact that we're below the 20. We're failing at the 20. The PPO has gone negative. I mean, these are the types of charts I do not like on a daily. Sometimes I'll go to the weekly, and if the weekly looks good, then I can kind of excuse the daily, if you will. But I don't like losing price support on any chart. And so here, to me, is the latest low. So you got this uptrend in play. Here was the first significant pullback. You got another move to the upside, higher high, and now here we are back down. This could be simply a test, and from here, we're going to want to see what develops because if you go up to the 20 and fail and then come back down, that's a head and shoulder breakdown. But if you do hold on to the support, we could simply be in a period of sideways consolidation. So this is the range that I would trade for now. Uh, but again, I don't like the fact that we're below the 20. The PPO is negative. So if this stock were to fail to hold, or this ETF, I should say, is, fails to hold, say, 36.75, uh, I would personally be out of it. I don't want to take any chances here. Okay. Next one up uh, was one of the most popular, and that would be PSCH, and that is the healthcare ETF. That's funny. I was just looking at this the other day because, uh, you know, June is the best month of the year for um, small caps relative to the S&P 500 going back 20 years. Um, in fact, let me just show you that real quick so you know what I'm referring to here. So if you go in and you take a look at the Russell 2000 seasonality and then we compare it to the S&P 500. Um, oops, let me hit the go button there. All right, so you can see in June over the last five years, uh, it's, it's been the best month. But if we drag this all the way back 20 years, 84% of June's, over the last 20 years, the Russell 2000s outperformed the S&P, and it is not even close, the average outperformance, 1.6%. Second closest month would be February and December, which are 1%. But June has just seasonally been that great time for the small caps in general. And then if we take a look at, say, the XLV relative to the S&P 500, so healthcare versus uh, you can see June, 80% of the time, healthcare outperforms the S&P 500. So we know small caps are hot in June, and we know healthcare is hot in June. So let's take a look at that PSCH again, because now we got small cap healthcare. I think this is a great entry for with a tight stop, because I think that that April low needs to hold. And keep in mind when you're looking at this chart, uh, and I would draw these two lines down below these intraday lows, because now today we've come up, we put a high, higher high in. So this could be the start of a move back to the upside. But this is a little bit of a play on seasonality. Strong small caps, strong health care in June, uh, tight stop. And I could you know, get out in a dollar or so or dollar and a half, keep a very tight stop. And uh, if it starts to strengthen again, I can always jump back in and try it again. But you can keep your stop very tight, which I like here. So I'm going to say that I'm a fan of PSCH, even though technically the chart uh, is a little bit uh, worrisome, especially if we get that breakdown. All righty, our only real estate uh, request, SAFE, S-A-F-E, safety, income, and growth. Um, a little bit of a negative divergence here, higher prices, PPO rolling over, we're losing the 20-day moving average. I'm suspecting maybe we, we have a move back down here to test that 50-day moving average, but this has been a really nice investment throughout 2019, I suspect. It will probably continue to be a pretty good investment. I just think short term, maybe we ran into some issues there. Here was a breakout. And then finally, the 
uh, prior low right here. So I'm thinking 25 to 2575 is an area that I would begin to look for some support here. Okay, and our last one is CyberArk software. Yeah, I think uh, I was looking earlier, I believe this stock was getting hit pretty good. Um, yeah, big, big move to the downside. Now it's trying to hold on to these prior lows. I think if we pull this one up on the relative chart, you're gonna see part of the problem again is that you got a stock here that is in the software space. So software, say what you want, it's been a great group uh, and I, I'm still in favor of software, but I've got to see a bottom or at least what I think is a bottom. And with the group breaking down to a multi-month low and this stock breaking back down below its 50 day moving average for the first time in 2019, yes, maybe it holds these recent lows. Let me go ahead and just annotate you know, a couple of areas to watch here. So I think that 120 level is pretty big. We had multiple tests right in here. Actually, I can dra drag that band down just a little bit more. See this prior top, pull back, break out, and then all these tests right here around 113. I think 120 is an area, if we don't hold that and we're, and we're weak into the close, I think this is one that could see maybe 113, 112, and then maybe we'll get a, some buying and a bounce for a period of time. Uh, volume trends still, still look pretty good here. And up until today, this has been a pretty strong performer within the software space. So. These could these stocks are probably setting up for a nice trade, but trying to time the bottom is going to be the hard part. Uh, I like the stock, but I would have to see some rally or something by the end of the day before I would get it interested on the long side. All right, and that does complete the 10 and 10. Here is the list of symbols that Tom just annotated. I will have these up in the Market Watchers Live chart list. Just go to the Articles tab, click on the Market Watchers Live blog, and the link to that chart list is right there at the top. I will be back with our final market update after this. Market direction is the single most important thing all investors need to know. Get the advice you need by joining dozens of elite money managers and financial experts, including Steve Forbes, Paul Merriman, Tom McClellan, and Keith Fitzgerald at The Money Show Seattle June 15th and 16th. You'll hear real-time market analysis and learn which stocks, bonds, funds, and commodities you should buy and sell to build a safer, more profitable portfolio. Claim your free pass at seattlemoneyshow.com. All right, let's take a look at the major markets right now. Dow Industrials are down just over 55 points currently. S&P 500 in negative, down almost a half a percent. We've got NASDAQ really getting hit hard uh, today. It is down 1.42%. And the NASDAQ 100, which I don't have up here, is down 1.8%. Certainly hit the hardest right now is technology. New York Stock Exchange is actually actually up a quarter of a percent. We've got Russell 2000. It is in the negative space, but does look like it might want to make a move back up to the upside. Canadians, Canadian markets following suit with the S&P 500, lower right now in the day, down almost 49 points for the TSX. Treasury yields are down right now. We've got a reading currently of 2.109%. The VIX is rising. It has made it up to 19.5, but currently we are at 19. Three. UUP is lower on the day, down seven cents, now reading 26.25. GLD, uh, in contrast, and as expected, gap up and continuing higher for gold. You can see a really incredible move we started to see since uh, midweek last week. USO is mostly, it looks like, a, well, not mostly unchanged. It is up 0.68%. We were up even higher than that, though, earlier on on the day, uh, currently reading at $11.18 for USO. TLT is up 33 cents at 131.89. And taking a look at our sectors, at this point, the winner is uh, materials. Uh, they've been hit pretty hard, but today they are leading the market up almost 1.7%. And Com Services really getting hit hard, down three and a quarter percent today. And technology and consumer discretionary, also in the sort of that aggressive sector area, are down almost one percent on the day. That's all I have for the final market update. I'm going to pass it back to you, Tom. All right. Sounds good. I know that uh, you're going to be going into your sentiment here in just a minute. And I know Greg is going to chime in a little bit on gold. So I just thought I would give an update here quickly on gold as well. 
Beautiful breakout. End of last week, three really strong days, no doubt about it. PPO looks good. Daily chart, I think, looks very bullish here on gold, and I wouldn't be surprised to see some additional move to the upside, especially if that dollar continues to weaken and the fear continues to run high because those th both of those tend to drive gold prices higher. The only caution that I would say is when you go to a longer term chart and you look at the, uh, the overall big picture of the dollar, which I think has been uptrending, that tends to lead to underperformance in gold relative to the S&P 500. We have seen periods where gold outperforms. Uh, we saw it in the fourth quarter of 2018 when the market got very nervous and we had a lot of selling. That's when typically gold will outperform. We're seeing it again as the market's going through the same problem. We saw it in late 2015, early 2016 when the stock market was struggling. So if you believe that the stock market is heading into a bear market or is going to continue moving lower, then I think gold will serve you well. But if you believe that we are still in a secular bull market, which I believe we are for the S&P 500, then I think that the strength in gold is temporary. And I would really watch the dollar. If this dollar trend line ever were to break down, I'd be much more bullish gold, materials, energy, and so forth. But I think that this is a group that it, you've got to be careful when they do rally, because if, that, if the dollar breaks out, the overall stock market settles down, I think you will quickly see another move down in terms of relative strength of gold. So that's basically what I had. Uh, we are going to go into sentiment. So Aaron, take it away. I shall do just that. And uh, I, I, I might show the weekly chart for gold right now because I, uh, I think it's the weekly or the monthly because we're hitting some really uh, tough overhead resistance right now for the dollar. So I think that would also bode well for gold. However, it is time for the Decision Point Sentiment Update uh, for June 3rd, 2019. These are the groups of sentiment indicators that I'm going to look at so that you can see the acronyms. Uh, American Association of Individual Investors, you can go to aaii.org and take that poll. National Association of Active Investment Managers, they report their exposure to the market. So we like to watch where they are sitting as far as that goes. Uh, we'll look at uh, these other sentiment indicators as well. Uh, let's go ahead and actually I'm going to I'm giving you a little bit of a preview here. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to start with the uh, put call ratios and what I am seeing currently going on there. At this point, we do have oversold readings. However, we've seen further oversold readings. We're not quite to extremes just yet. Uh, we are starting to head back down. What you really like to see on these are extremely oversold readings and then that move to the upside. I thought we were going to get that here. We had started that move to the upside. However, uh, of course, it failed. We're starting to head back down, as is uh, my inverted scale for the put call ratios here. So I think that they're uh, neutral to bullish. You know, they could get further oversold. We could still see this move down uh, and accommodate more downside action. So, you know, if we were sitting at these extremes down here, I would have a much more bu bullish outlook for the short term. But right now I just can't get, uh, I can't get to it, get into it that much. All right, here are the AAII investments. Let me make this just a wee bit bigger for everybody so you can get a really good picture of what's going on. Uh, I am seeing some uh, climactic readings here to the bearish side. So if you look, currently we're looking at 40% uh, bears versus the 25%, almost 25% bulls. What I watch is the bull bear ratio. And right now it is very, very low. I've marked it with this uh, with the blue line right here, that dotted blue line. And that gives you a sense of how oversold these readings currently are. We really don't have too many times where we've seen the move, uh, where we've seen this ratio move much below where we are, at, we are at now. We have seen it move lower, so I'm not gonna say that this is it, uh, especially when you look at these tops that occurred during that time. Uh, they really are, you know, we could certainly see more uh, bearish uh, activity here as far as what our individual investors are thinking. 
So I would be reading this, although those are very bearish readings, I don't think, I think we could get more oversold as far as th this goes. I think we could see more bearish uh, sentiment out there. We're not really getting to the extremes I would like to see right now. All right, next up is the name exposure index. And as you can see, I have to say neutral. Uh, we have been watching exposure dropping week by week. Not a surprise when you see what's going on in the market as the market continues lower on a weekly basis. But we are not uh, what I would say oversold. We are not sitting at extremes. I would look at this reading as almost neutral, given, the, uh, given where we're at right now. We need to really see the exposure fall way back. Uh, like we did back here in uh, November and December. That's what I would like to look for. I'm not seeing that yet. So honestly, as far as exposure goes, uh, I, I am uh, looking at this as a, a neutral. All right, Wall Street Sentiment Survey. This is a weekly poll that uh, market timers, a pretty static group of market timers are given every week. We say whether we are going into the week as a bull or a bear. Half of us, uh, that includes me, were bearish coming into this week. Uh, we still had 38% that were bulls. Uh, that still makes this ratio, that bull bear ratio that I watch on these charts, still very low. But again, you can see we've had plenty of ratio readings that were much lower than this. So while this is, uh, you know, a, a very bearish reading at 50%, seeing half of market timers bearish, we've certainly seen uh, more climactic readings here. So I'm not, I'm not putting much stock in this. I would say that uh, we're looking at more of a neutral sort of situation here as far as the Wall Street sentiment survey goes. All right, we're gonna move on to the Rydex asset analysis. And uh, not a surprise, see what's going on here. Uh, you've got an increase in the bear funds, not a surprise, like I said, when you're seeing this decline, the assets are moving up. I do have this listed as flat. For money markets. It looks like it may have been moving lower. Um, but if you look at from, from the beginning of this week to where we uh, were at the end of uh, last week, the beginning of last week and the end of last, the week before, you can see that really the readings are about the same. So I'm looking at money market assets as being mostly the same. But notice that uh, move out of the equity funds, uh, moving quickly out of those equity funds. This makes our bull bear ratio, our Rydex ratio, which is actually the amount of bear funds plus the money market assets over the bull assets. So the smaller this number gets, the more bullish everybody is because of course, as your denominator approaches zero, that's where you're gonna get those, uh, or I mean, approaches of infinity, uh, that means you're gonna end up with a very, very small number. You're getting smaller and smaller. So as you can see, we're getting smaller and smaller, meaning there's more interest in uh, the bull assets currently. So I'm looking at a, a fairly oversold uh, bear bull ratio here, right X ratio. But again, we've seen it move well below this. So we could, again, accommodate more downside here. But this certainly shows a bearish sentiment as we're getting that increase in the bear funds and that decrease in the right X uh, bull funds. All right, I'm gonna look very quickly at our ultra short-term indicators. Carl, I believe wrote about these on Friday and we talked about it in the DP uh, show on Friday. Uh, right now, the VIX is not penetrating that lower Bollinger Band. That tells me that even though we have climactic readings here on breadth with the net AD and net AD volume, uh, as well as the new lows, I, I don't think they're climactic enough. Uh, so I think we're going to see some more downside in the short term, which, of course, is why I went with being a bear. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about gold right now. And I'm going to bring in uh, my pal, Greg Schnell, so he can uh, discuss uh, his thoughts on gold as well, since he follows it very closely. Uh, we talked a little bit before the show, Greg, and I know that we're both very bullish right now on gold. Uh, I was bullish back here when we got that breakout from that wedge, but of course that was a failed breakout. But now we're getting this 
hugely decisive move to the upside on this uh, wedge. PMO is now in uh, positive territory. And then look at the the uh, discounts right now on Sprott Physical Gold Trust. Uh, you have uh, quite a reading there, Spike. We've seen higher again, but the fact that we are getting this uh, these high discounts, that that is, uh, you know, that's a bearish uh, sentiment reading. And of course, sentiment being contrarian, there you go. So what are you thinking about gold? Do you want to share your charts? Sure. I've got a few that I'd like to uh, bring up here. And I, I'll recognize that the show doesn't have all day for me because <laughs> I have lots of charts. But uh, the I've got a couple that I think are pretty important. So first of all, from a currency perspective, uh, as an asset class, from bonds as an asset class, from um, the the gold chart itself, the miners are starting to outperform the metal, so that's bullish, and the uh, GLD compared to the S and P 500 are all starting to move. Now, here's the picture for um, the inflation protected bonds. And what you see back in 2016 is they started to rally here, this black line going up and broke this big downtrend. And recently we did that here in the month of March and started to break out to the upside. But this move here was pretty important and it also gave us um, a clue that something was going to go on. So I, this is one of the charts that sets up nicely. Um, I've got this other one sitting here, which is the Japanese yen. And the Japanese yen and gold have a very high correlation. Uh, so uh, the point is here that the PPO started to break out last week and is starting to move higher. And this, uh, I'm a big fan of trends on, on the oscillator, especially on the PPO. And so when, when this is starting to break out and change what I'll call the, the momentum trend and it's bouncing right off zero and starting to head higher, when the Japanese yen goes higher, that's typically bullish for for gold and we saw this in 2016 when the yen broke out of this base here that was a big move so i like that and seeing the the yen go higher here i think is a another good clue that things are starting to get ready to rock now i've got just a few more charts that i want to show you a little farther down here so one is the gdx and gld and and when the miners start to outperform the metal this chart should go higher and we've got this big downtrend here and what we're looking for is now that this would start to break out so first of all we're happy that it's putting in a higher low that's probably one of the better um, things that we finally get to see on this chart but just looking down here this is gold uh, so it doesn't have today on it this one will update on end of day but here's gdx uh, just by itself starting to take off to the upside and of course up here is the ratio of gdx and gld so these are really starting to move and uh you know a nugget or something like that would also give you the the perspective of just how far they're breaking out but here's gold compared to the s p 500 and one of the things that we saw um, was way back here in 2015 was it broke out of this downtrend and then it pulled back and then it rallied back up. And during this period here, gold moved 30%, but the gold miners moved 150%. So they moved from a little under $12 all the way up to $31 or $32. And this was a beautiful move. And so we're, that's what we're looking forward to here, uh, thinking we're going to get the same breakout. So what happened here is the ratio of GLD started to outperform and then pulled back again, just like it did here, started to outperform, pulled back, and now it's taking off again. So we've been talking about this watch closely. This has been on our list since April here and uh, continuing to watch to see if this was going to set up with a higher low and start to take off. And that's what we're getting right now. So that was another clue to me. But I think the next chart here is, um, just have to go find it, this one. Uh, this is my chart for, for GLD. And what I want to point you to, so there's a, a technician named Ralph Vince. He's written about five books. He's a mathematician, pretty smart character. But one of the things I liked about Ralph's work was he talks about when you have something hitting, um, you know, really rare lows or something like that in volume, either highs or lows, they're important. Well, what we had, if I could just zoom in on this chart, is down in this bottom corner here, We've had three lows, uh, all that go back and make three-year lows. So they were so quiet for three full 
weeks here. Just nothing going on as this base was being built. And now all of a sudden they're breaking out. And the other thing I like is this PPO had riv risen above zero and is now starting to bounce off the zero level and go higher. So it's this combination of very quiet volume and the bullish setup here in momentum. The full stochastic moving above 20 is a good clue, but also above 50. And you can see when it goes above 50, that's a nice place to get on board. Um, relative strength, of course, GLD breaking out to the S&P 500 is good. And this scooter ranking, as you notice here, GLD was underperforming for two years as a as an etf briefly pushed up and now came back and is starting to rally again so i really like to see that sort of um momentum change where it it couldn't stay up here for more than a week or two before falling back this was kind of our first kick at the cat pulls back and held support at the 40 week moving average so everything about that i like mm -hmm. um, I, there's not enough that i can say good about gold here i like it a lot yeah, I have to agree with you. And I just wanted to pull up my UUP chart on the dollar uh, ETF. And we've hit some really uh, strong overhead resistance here. It's really time for it to turn back down. And you can see that the weekly PMO is doing just that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to wrap up the uh, sentiment report and tell you what uh, I'm seeing right now. Uh, we have that 10-day moving average of the put call ratio. It's oversold but falling and it certainly could get lower. So that's why I'm neutral to bullish because typically when it's oversold, I mean, that's when you start looking for a reversal. But ultimately, the way we could move lower on that ratio. AAII, we had that bearish climactic reading on the ratio. Uh, that would be bullish for the market. The name exposure is lower, but it is not climactic at this point. I would look at that as a neutral for the market. Climactic increase in bears, uh, which should make you a little bit bullish for the week. However, again, that ratio, that bull bear ratio is just not really that oversold, could get more oversold. Finally, right X ratio, the bearish money flow, uh, the oversold right X uh, ratio, that is a bullish uh, thing for the market. But again, I think that we uh, could um, still, we <laughs> that ratio could still move lower. We've seen it move lower. Breadth and VIX, I didn't really see anything climactic. I mean, we had somewhat climactic breadth numbers, but the VIX can move lower. I think we could get more climactic numbers on breadth, so I'm pretty much neutral there. Gold sentiment, we talked a lot about gold with help from my friend Greg. And uh, you've got that bullish falling wedge. It's executed decisively. The PMO is positive. The high discount rates, uh, that is uh, bullish. Uh, it is bearish as far as sentiment goes. So that is bullish for gold. And I am bullish on gold. And that is all I have for the decision point sentiment update. So I hope you enjoyed that. Right. Now I guess it's time for us to move into looking at our poll. Am I right? Whose Monday setups are, are the winners? Well, I think we talked enough, uh, talked gold up quite a bit, Greg. So I'm not surprised to see that one as our first choice. Yeah, uh, uh, the charts are really setting up nice here. So there's, I've got lots of positivity on that uh, particular thing. And it would be really nice to obviously see the gold miners break out. But if gold gets above that 1375 level, then I think we could have a rocking good time in gold for a while here. So we've got a little bit of room to get up there another 60 bucks or so. Yeah, yeah I actually, I would agree with you on that. I think 1375, looking at the longer term chart, um, I well, first of all, short term, I think it could run to there, especially if the market remains uh, under a lot of pressure and there's a lot of emotion. Um, I would not be surprised to see gold continue to pop. Um, if, if you look back to the to the relative strength of gold, it generally either coincides with a bear market or a steep drop in, in U.S. equity prices or a steep drop in the in the dollar. And so I think Aaron had a really good chart with the dollar reaching a key overhead resistance level. And of course, we got the market dropping. So I think short term uh, that could set up for gold. Longer term, I'm not so convinced bullishly. Mm -hmm. So we will see. But uh, Greg, always a pleasure to have you on here. You got any final words for everybody? No, um, I wrote my Chart Watchers newsletter. Probably the big thing on there is go and look at all the monthly charts worldwide. They're ugly. Um, pay attention to those. I think that's the pressure point. Okay. Yeah, they are definitely ugly and it, it's worse there than it is in the U.S., no doubt. Although the U.S. trying to catch up. Yeah. Uh, any, any final thoughts, Aaron? Um, just, I'm going to continue bearish into this week. Uh, I know 
it, it's time for that reversal, but I don't see it coming just yet. I'm going to say that I am bearish going into the week. I think we're going to end lower. All right. I think the market's going to shock everybody. I think we're going to go higher, but uh, trying to time it. I mean, maybe it's today, maybe not. Maybe it's in a week or two, but I do think we're going to bounce back pretty strongly. All right. We're opposite, just as always. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I do want to thank all of you for being with us today. Thanks to uh, Greg for joining us. Uh, please remember to complete the survey as you exit. As a quick reminder, Market Watchers Live airs five days a week, Mondays through Fridays from noon to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a great Monday afternoon, everybody, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Happy trading. Thank you.